If you're anything like me, you are insanely hyped for the upcoming release of Super Mario Maker 2 next week. However, since the original game was built for the Wii U gamepad and not the Switch, there are definitely a few shortcomings in the sequel that some cheap products can help fix. So today I will tell you about 5 must-have accessories that will enhance your experience with the game and that you should consider picking up. Let's take a look. If we haven't met before, hi, I'm Aaron, and this is Top Spec, your one-stop shop for tech content. Before I get onto the list, know that these items are not in any specific order, but that you should make sure to stick to the end, because I will give you my opinion on what items I think are day one necessities. But now that that's out of the way, let's hop right into the list. Alright Chris, so what do we have first? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to talk about is this pair of styluses by Miko. But before I can actually talk about these, I feel like there's quite a few things that I should address, the first of which being the actual function of a stylus to Mario Maker. If you played the original game, you would remember how vital a stylus was to creating levels in a fluid way. Paired with the gamepad, you could select blocks and items and arrange everything in a pretty fluid and precise way. And the coolest part was that if your official stylus fell between your couch cushions, you could literally use anything that applied pressure as a replacement for it, so pens, mechanical pencils, you name it. Going back to Super Mario Maker 2, you actually have two options for creating levels now, using a controller or using the Switch in tabletop mode with the capacitive touchscreen. I'd personally argue that the touchscreen provides a much nicer way to build levels, though it's certainly flawed and that's why they give you two options. The problem with it is that you lose a lot of precision when you're using your finger to control the touchscreen rather than a stylus, but Nintendo actually realizes that. In many regions, including Europe and Japan, a Mario Maker branded stylus comes for free with your game if you pre-order it. However, if you're like me and you're in the US, Nintendo for whatever reason chose to not give us Americans the stylus because the United States. <laughs> Thankfully, as far as I can tell from the pictures, it looks like they kind of cheaped out on the stylus, even though it might look pretty cool. So now that I look at it, maybe it's Europe and Japan who got f***ed over? Anyways, that's where these come in. While they're not specifically branded for the Switch, they're about the best that you can get for $15 on Amazon with Prime shipping. Within the box, you obviously have the two styluses that I keep talking about and six replacement tips. Each stylus is about the size of a pen and they feel pretty nice in the hands. On this side of the stylus, you have a more traditional fabric sort of tip and unscrewing the cap on the other side reveals another tip which might look a little bit strange but it's actually pretty cool. This tip replicates the feeling of using a pen, and it is definitely the more precise of the two options. So I envision that it will allow for creating some pretty cool drawings and comments since those are back. Alright, that's enough about these goddamn styluses. What's next? Okay, I kinda lied. This is the Switch Play Stand by Hori, and it kind of goes hand in hand with using a stylus. Let me explain. If you're planning on making levels in tabletop mode, even if you don't plan on picking up a stylus, you need this, and here's why. It is widely known that the Switch is built in, kickstand is not stable, it's not centered, and mine has broken off literally hundreds of times. So with that in mind, creating levels requires constant physical interaction with the screen and welp. <laughs> Another widely known issue with the Switch is that you cannot use it in tabletop mode and charge it at the same time thanks to the not so conveniently placed USB-C port on the bottom of the device. So thankfully, Hori came out with this stand right about the time the Switch launched and so if you don't already have it, now is the perfect time to buy it. I was hesitant to buy it for the longest time, but paired with the stylus that I already talked about, it will make creating levels in Super Mario Maker 2 feel even nicer than it did in its predecessor. The stand has three different angles that you can choose to use it at, and the entire thing folds up really nicely and can easily just be thrown into a bag when you're on the go. At the time of shooting this video, you can pick up the Hori Play stand yourself for $12.99 on Amazon, and Hori even offers a few different designs, including a Legend of Zelda and Super Mario 1. Alright, next item. 
This is a good one. This is a LAN adapter and it solves one of the biggest issues with the Switch the horrendous built-in wireless network card. I always thought that the constant lag I had on online servers in the Switch was because Nintendo had some, well, awful online servers, but the servers themselves aren't actually too bad. The Switch is to blame again. Online games lag incredibly badly without a wired connection, and so at the end of the video I will show you a direct side-by-side -side comparison of playing games on the Switch with and without this guy. In terms of Mario Maker 2 specifically, Having a good online connection is important because of the new online modes. If you want to take the competitive modes seriously on any level without risk of lagging or timing out constantly, you need one of these. This one specifically is by a company called Smaze, if that's how you say it, and it's one of the cheapest that you can buy specifically branded for the Switch on Amazon. The company that made this play stand that I talked about earlier also makes a LAN adapter, but it's $15 more expensive than this guy, and it does the exact same thing. And so, as long as you're okay with this kind of ugly silver color, I'd highly recommend picking up this one over the one by Hori to save yourself $15. Next. So here we have a pair of grips for using the Joy-Cons individually. The reason that these apply to Mario Maker is because, at least at the time of recording, it appears that the only way to build levels cooperatively with a friend is using Joy-Cons in the sideways mode. But obviously this video was filmed in advance to the game coming out, so as soon as I can confirm whether that's actually true or not I'll make sure to leave a pinned comment below. Either way, creating levels takes a lot of time if you want to make something unique and fun to play, and so if this is truly the only way to make levels, you need some of these. And even though this will be the third video on this channel where I complain about having large hands, using a Joy-Con without a grip hurts like hell. Anyways, you have tons of options when it comes to buying these Joy-Con grips now, um, but these were by a company called Fastnail, and they're pretty good for their $13 price tag. Next. Alright, so spoiler alert, we don't have this one. Although I won't mind using a Pro Controller to play Super Mario Maker, some streamers that I watch refuse to play it with anything other than a SNES-like controller, so that's where this comes in. So this represents the SN30, a Bluetooth controller by 8-Bit Doe. At the time of recording, this is about the closest that you can get to using something like a real SNES controller, as there is no official SNES controller for the Switch or adapter. However, I can easily see that changing, so unless you absolutely need something other than a Pro Controller or a set of Joy-Cons to play the game day one, I would avoid this for now. The good thing is that it only runs you about $30, so if it is something that you feel like you really need, it doesn't break the bank too hard. Alright, so that's all the items on my list, but if you were to actually buy everything that I talked about today, it would run you an additional $81 on top of the game itself, so let me tell you what I think is essential. First, if you're planning on playing online at all, you need the LAN adapter. This doesn't even feel like something I think that you should consider, it's basically a requirement to have a smooth experience. Also, remember to stick around until the end of the video and you'll see what I mean. Secondly, if your main interest in the game is creating levels, I would highly recommend picking up the styluses and the stand. Those two kind of go hand in hand with one another, but the Joy-Con grips and SN30 controller are more up to you. If you're going to be creating levels cooperatively, the grips are certainly nice to have, and for some people, using a SNES-like controller is the only way that they can play the game. Links to everything that I talked about in the description, but again, make sure to stick around to the end of the video to see that comparison with and without the LAN adapter online. That's really it for me though, so if you have any questions or ideas for future videos, make sure to drop a comment below, I should respond pretty quickly. Also, like and subscribe if this video is helpful and you want to see more content. We'll see you next week. Alright, so after recording the gameplay used for this comparison, it quickly became apparent to me and Chris that it does not do complete justice to the amount of input lag playing without a wired connection gives you. So if you can deal with watching me get destroyed in Super Smash Bros, know that some of the blame does fall on that input lag. Typically when I play online without a wired connection, I encounter all sorts of rubber banding, and it's sometimes to the point that my matches will completely freeze and I'll get disconnected. So I must have just gotten lucky when I was recording. 